Hi y'all, my name is Dylan Mulroy. I have been a software engineer for uh, the better part of 10 years professionally. Uh, in the past year and a half, I've been really getting into OCaml, uh, ReasonML, and functional programming more broadly. And one of the technologies that I've found that I've really enjoyed building applications with is a tool called Melange. Melange is a compiler which will take OCaml or ReasonML and compile it to JavaScript. Um, if you're not familiar with what OCaml and ReasonML are, they are uh, functional programming languages. ReasonML is a alternative syntax for OCaml, so they can kind of interop seamlessly in the same project. So um, what you're looking at right here uh, for video one is going to be just a quick intro to Melange and getting set up. We're going to be walking through each chapter of this book titled Melange uh, for React Developers. It's a project-based guided introduction to Melange for React Developers, and it's a free book online. Uh, link will be in the description to check this out, and the code is also on YouTube. Um, if you're looking for resources for Melange and like why you may want to use it um, and how to use it, uh, you can find that at melange.re. So let's dive in to getting started. So this book is still a work in progress. We're gonna be making videos as the author of this book publishes chapters. We already have a handful of chapters to get through, so look forward to those videos. We're gonna to try to have a video for essentially each of these sections in this sidebar. So up first is the intro. Motivation. This is a project-based guided introduction to Melange and its ecosystem. Because Melange uses both OCaml and JavaScript ecosystems, there are quite a few tools and concepts to learn. Therefore, we try to make each chapter small and digestible, not introducing too many things at once. Audience, you should already know how to make front-end applications in JavaScript, in particular with React. You should be interested in learning how to leverage your existing knowledge to build apps using Reason React. Uh, you do not need to know OCaml. We'll slowly introduce the basics of the language throughout the tutorial. That said, a good complement to this guide is OCaml programming, correct, efficient, and beautiful, which teaches the language from the ground up and goes much deeper into its features. Just as an aside, this uh, resource here is the resource that I use to learn OCaml, and uh, it's definitely among uh, the top resources for learning the language. Uh, link will also be in the description for this book. So chapters and topics. So chapter one is the uh, titled counter. Uh, we're going to build an app that has a number that can be incremented or decremented, and it will cover uh, the module, modules, options, React string, pipes, uh, pipe blast operator, functional chaining, and the switch expression. Now, I'm not gonna read through all these. We'll cover the section uh, that we're gonna cover in each video at the beginning from this table, uh, but let's move forward. Because of the focus on Reason React, we won't cover traditional OKML syntax in this guide. Instead, we'll cover the Reason syntax, which works great with Reason React. So just a little bit of background on uh, Reason. Um, as I mentioned, ReasonML is literally just an alternative syntax to OCaml that feels more like JavaScript and is meant for people coming from C family languages like JavaScript. It was made by Jordan Walk, who is also the creator of React. So um, this next bit might be unsurprising, but uh, Reason has first class support uh, for JSX built into the language, which why, which is why it lends itself uh, so nicely to React development. So let's jump in to installation. So I already have OCaml installed in my system, but we will still walk through these steps here. The first thing we're going to need to do is install OPAM. OPAM is OCaml's package manager. Uh, this is how we go out and install packages similar to NPM. So follow these instructions here to get started. Uh, and then just keep walking through here. And then we're going to download uh, and clone the repo. One thing to note is that installing OPAM for the first time may take a few minutes um, just as a heads up. Another thing to add is OPAM has this concept of switches. You can kind of think of switches as um, really local dependencies for your OCaml project uh, on a per project basis. Um, you can kind of think of it like node modules, but where all of the dependencies in your switch 
are compiled with a specific version of the uh, OCaml compiler. So getting started, let's download and run the starter project. So we'll go to GitHub to where this project lives. Uh, this is the repo we're going to be following along with. So let's go ahead and clone this. We'll grab that link. We're going to come over here and we'll say, do we already have that? Say git clone. Copy that into Melange for React devs. We're going to change directory in there. Um, let's take a look what, what we have in this directory. Okay, our standard stuff. And then our instructions. Uh, we're going to run uh, npm run init, so let's go ahead and run that. Let's actually eval opam env. Make sure we are working with uh, the right OCaml environment, and then let's run npm run init. So what this is doing for us, this is running opam switch create, and let's scroll back up here quick. Uh, opam switch create in the current directory a project using the compiler version 5.1.1, which is the current release. We're going to say yes to all the prompts, and then we're going to install dependencies only. This part's a little confusing, not super important. It just means uh, that we don't want to install our project itself, uh, just the dependence we need to build and work on the project. So this is going to take a few minutes to run the first time. Um, so we will be right back when this is done. OK, so running npm run init has just finished. Again, that will probably take uh, a couple minutes. What's going to happen is OCaml is going to go out and basically uh, pull down all the dependencies and compile each dependency with the version of the compiler that we're using for this project, that being 5.1.1 in this instance. So that's why this takes so long on the first, first go. So you'll see uh, that we get this command spit out, eval opamm. So let's copy that and throw that in our terminal. Again, this is just going to bootstrap our environment variable. So we are working with our version of the compiler uh, scope to our project, basically. Next up is going to be npm run build. So let's go ahead and copy that and run it. So we'll say npm run build. That looks like it went successfully. So what happened here is under the covers, npm called opam exec dune build. Um, OPAM is invoking Dune for us. Dune is OCaml's build tool. This is what's going to compile all of our artifacts for us and compile our OCaml or Reason to JavaScript. So now that that's done, I believe the next step will be uh, npm run serve. So let's see this. Drop that in there. We'll allow that. And there we go. Welcome to my app we have a successful uh, running Melange app. So next up is installing visual code extensions, or our editor tools. If you're using VS Code, you can go ahead and search for the OCaml platform extension. This is going to install your language server and formatting. Since I am using NeoVim, we are going to have to do a slightly different workflow here. So if we kill this, we're going to say OPAM install OCaml LSP server and OCaml format. This will be the last step uh, to getting started. Once these dependencies are installed, or if you're in VS Code um, and you have the platform extension installed and these settings set, we'll be ready to move on to the first chapter, building our counter component. That will be in uh, video two, and I'll catch you there.